Hello and welcome back to my channel, Jacob Payton here, and I'm going to be talking about Tales of the Slayer, a Buffy the Vampire uh, Slayer anthology, and it includes stories from Tales of the Slayer Volume 1 and Volume 2, which I don't know anything about Volume 1 and Volume 2 of Tales of the Slayer. I'm guessing maybe this is like a best of anthology if there are multiple volume anthologies. And it says, into every generation a slayer is born. As long as there have been vampires, there has been a slayer. One girl instilled with supernatural strength and abilities so that she may protect the world from, for from the forces of darkness. But the chosen one leads a brief, violent life. When one slayer dies, another is called, creating an eternal line of powerful female warriors stretching all the way back to the beginning of time. From ancient Greece to present day, Tales of the Slayer chronicles their stories in which each girl has a personal history, a shared moral code, and a commitment to conquer evil, regardless of the cost. Um, I enjoyed a lot of the stories in here. It does do a lot of time hopping. Uh, it just follows slayers throughout various points in history. Um, I will say right off the bat, uh, for any of you that are looking for kind of happier stories in the vein that Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the show is, and even some of the tie-in books where it's kind of zany and, you know, has Xander-esque characters cracking jokes and stuff like that. You're not going to really find that in these stories. Uh, these stories are pretty bleak, as the whole point of these stories is to show how brutal and short a lot of the Slayer's lives are. And there were two stories I think I enjoyed the most in this. One was about Madame Bathory, and I should probably say who that was written by. Oh, maybe it doesn't say in here. Well, that's not very nice. Does it not say who wrote what? Oh, here we go. It's on the content. Um, that one was... The Blut Grafen, Hungary, 1609 by Yvonne Navarro. Um, I enjoyed that one a lot. That was super bleak. Uh, I, if you know anything about the Madame Bovary uh, story, she was a real life person. She killed people. Uh, she would get people to come serve in her house as maids and then basically bathe in their blood because she was convinced that it would keep her young. Uh, she ended up dying. I believe she was walled in a tower alive since they like, I guess, couldn't kill her because she was noble or something. It's been a long time since I've heard the story. It used to be one of the things that History Channel would bring up on a lot of their like Halloween specials. Um, it was always kind of interesting. You know, I, and essentially in a lot of ways, I guess she almost was a real life vampire, quote unquote, since she did kind of bathe and consume people's blood in the attempt to stay young. Obviously, it did not work out. And she met a what probably should have been a more brutal end, um, although I would think getting walled into an area alive and slowly starving to death is pretty brutal. But either way, I really like that story a lot. It did not pull any punches. Um, and I will say that all of these stories were really good. Um, there's one right in the beginning, which is by Jane Epson, that takes place in Sunnydale and does actually use the characters of Buffy and stuff like that. And it's called Again. And I liked that one um, mostly because I like anything that has to do with Buffy and them. But it basically takes place later in the Buffy series and throws the characters back in the past and they have to like figure stuff all, stuff out and Buffy's mom's still alive. Um, if you haven't watched Buffy and you don't know what I'm talking about and the scene that her mom dies, I ooh, you're in for a uh, emotional roller coaster and I will leave it at that. And what was the other story I liked a whole lot? Um, oh, Abomination. Beauport, Brittany, France by Laura J. Burns and Mullen de Metz. I liked that story because that was essentially about a slayer that was trying not to be a slayer, right? She just wanted a normal life. She wanted a husband. She wanted to have kids. And as we know, the universe, when it comes to slayers, 
doesn't pull any punches, right? They're gonna throw monsters at them whether they want to or not, and there is no hiding from that responsibility. And the more you try to hide from that responsibility, as you know, we even saw in the Buffy the Vampire Slayer show, if you're a fan of the show or if you read the comics, it has very bad side effects. Um, so I did enjoy that. I mean, all of these stories in here were very true to the uh, backstory. Not oh, not backstory because we don't know about a lot of these in the show, but very true to like the Buffy mythos. I felt like. Um, and, you know, they all kind of added up to what I would think the history of a lot of Slayers would be like, especially like, the brief glimpses we get from past Slayers when watching the show. So, yeah, I really enjoyed this. I think if you're a fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and you want to know about some other Slayers or you just want a brief glimpse back into that universe, you know, I would say go ahead and try this out. Uh, I liked it a lot. Um, and it's not a super long read either. I don't think any of the stories were super long. Um, I was basically just picking a story and reading it each afternoon. I do like the fact that they're producing a lot more Buffy the Vampire Slayer content. There's another young adult book series that's come out. Um, I think it's called, I think the first book is called like One Girl in All the World. And that's about an entirely new Slayer and kind of picks off. Um, not picks off, but picks up where a lot of the comics ended in the Buffyverse, from my understanding. Uh, feel free to let me know in the comments if I'm wrong on that, because that is something else I definitely want to dive into. Um, I would love for us to get another show at some point, but I will gladly take any and every entry into the Buffyverse that I can. So yeah, I think even if you're not a huge fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you're just getting started with it. Um, Definitely, you know, feel free to jump in this. Uh, if you're not past like the fourth or fifth season, you might want to stay away from the first story because there is some spoilers. But, you know, I I think Buffy's one of those things, especially Buffy the Vampire Slayer, is it's just the right amount of horror and fantasy that I think it appeals to both sides of the coin a little bit. So, you know, if you see this around and you want to pick it up, I would say definitely do it. I enjoyed a lot of the stories in here. And, you know, really the rest of them don't have anything to do with Buffy in them. So you don't have to be the uh, biggest fan of Buffy to really get into these. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed this. You're going to see some more Buffy stuff come up in this channel. Some more Angel stuff too. I'm reading some Angel tie-in novels that I've been meaning to review. Um, I like most of them. Uh, I will say that some are a little hit and miss, but yeah, I enjoyed this. If you've read more of these, if you know about volumes one and two, if you know about the YA series, the young adult series that's out now, um, you know, let me know about it in the comments below. Also, if you know of any other series or books that you think would appeal to fans of Buffy, you know, let me know in the comments. I'm always looking for new stuff to read. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.